it's time now for you to learn how to fly your aircraft straight and level. When you're in a normal flight simulator, straight and level should not be that difficult. Reason being is because you probably have selected no winds, no turbulence, so forth. So in actual aircraft and flying conditions, there's always a bit of winds and updrafts, downdrafts, the list goes on. So go ahead and set a few uh, wind directions and speed for you to simulate for a more realistic flight approach. When flying straight and level, always remember hand vertically on a dashboard and then your fourth finger should touch the base of the horizon. This will give you nice proper straight and level flight. What I want you to do is to look outside because this is a VFR flight. We'll look inside for instruments once we're doing instrument flying. But well, we are, however, going to peek inside. So we're flying outside, peeking out inside for 8,500 feet confirmed, and then we're looking outside again. Then we are peeking inside on the artificial horizon. Wings is confirmed level, air speed's good, looking outside. From here, um, you keep doing your scans, but what you'll do then is also confirm on the left, what is the distance from our wingtip to the horizon. Then looking to the right, is it more or less the same? And then yes it is, then this also serves as confirmation, you are flying straight and level. So now you've seen we are 8500, everything is going perfectly as required. What I want to bring to your attention, we want to fly on say, let's say we want to fly on the west heading. Let me turn on to west and show you how we actually going to keep flying west. So I'm going to pause here for a second to give you the general idea. I want you to pick like three reference points that we are flying towards. So say we want to fly in the west direction. This means our first scenery or landmark that we can use might be this patch of land right here. So we're flying towards that patch. Our second one can be this patch there in the distance. And then we know our third location can be that little bit of hill area this side so this then serves as a good indication for outside fl outside flying why i'm also saying select free because the closer we are going to get then eventually one of these landmarks is going to disappear behind the dashboard and you can't see it anymore and then you can actually go ahead and look on your second landmark as a reference with that, that's basically your straight and level, but you will also need to be able to work your flight trimmer. So let me show you how to actually use a trimmer correctly. I found most students, they actually take the aircraft and trim up and down for what I want to do. Let's say the aircraft wasn't trimmed, like now where it's actually in a climbing position. You are going to take your control column, you're going to leave it in the four finger attitude position or any attitude that you want the aircraft to be at. Then you'll set your trimmer until you've got no back pressure on your control column. So that's the main part where everybody gets it wrong. First, all the aircraft with your flight controls at the angle you want the aircraft to fly at. Then, as I said, then only set the trimmer and make small adjustments as required. So there you can see we are now perfectly keeping altitude. But we'll just fly back to 8,500 feet. Last, I also want to bring the flaps to your attention. I want you to practice also flying with flaps. This will help you in your landing configuration when we do get to the landing part so first thing we're going to do make sure we are in the white arc currently we just out of the white arc so we'll go ahead and reduce the power a little bit wait for our speed to decrease there we go and now we will lower the flaps 
So we'll just re-trim and we'll go ahead and lower the flat. And again, I'm not going to add pressure now. Remember the nose rises above the horizon and then only gives you a nose low attitude. So it's your job to counter that nose pitch with adding either back or forward pressure on the control column. As you can see, we are now flying at a narrow angle of um, attack, but the slower we actually fly the aircraft, then the bigger the angle of attack will would become. So I'm going to fly there roughly about 60 knots. So now you can see we are having our nose of the aircraft on the horizon, but our altimeter actually displays we're not climbing or descending. So now I'm actually going to give it a little bit more power. Let's go full power, retract the flaps. Now I'm going to show you the same angle that we're actually going to fly. And we're waiting for the speed. Remember, the more speed over the wing, more lift is produced. So now you can see it almost looks like I am descending the aircraft. But notice the distance from my nose of the aircraft towards the horizon. And, but I'm still maintaining straight and level flight. So always just be aware you do get different angles with the speed settings. And that's it for your straight and level flight. See you for the next flight lesson.